Today I'm going to show you how to fix mesh networks in Maya if your distribution looks like this to this. And I hope uh, you'll understand a few things or two. As a bonus, I'm going to show you how to make your mesh network seem a bit random so that they don't all seem linear. Then I'm also going to show you how to distribute the trees in such a way that it doesn't get on the mountains. So let's start this. So guys, this is our tree and this is the environment that we want to distribute our tree at. So one of the first things that you have to make sure you do is uh, you can see right over here on the transforms I have zeroed out everything I produce a transformation. So that's one of the things that you're not supposed to do. As you see what I'm doing here is I'm moving the pivot point for the tree. The reason as why I'm doing this is in order when the mesh network is ready, the distributed trees, their contact with the ground will start from the point where the pivot point is. Let us say by mistake you froze the transformations. Uh, you can get them back by going to modify and bake pivot. And you can see now, you can see now that we got our values back. So make sure that you zero them out manually from there. Don't zero it out uh, by just freezing transformations. That can bring issues. So as you can see now, it's back to the origin of our grid. And the second thing you're supposed to do is come here to the running man with the cog. Uh, at its settings over here, uh, make sure you go to the settings panel, change um, the linear here from maybe meters, if you kept your meters to centimeters and save. Because the mesh networks can have Sometimes, if you don't do that, it doesn't show the geometry on the ground. That's the other issue. So if you've experienced that, that could be the reason why. So change to centimeters. And also, I believe that if you open up the project file and you left it in meters, after it working, sometimes you can maybe see that the geometry is not uh, available on your, on your ground. So changing it back to centimeters and saving should do the trick. Now from there you just select your geometry that you want to scatter on the ground. Uh, so you come over here and um, go to the animation tab. You can see meshes over here. If you don't have the mesh network, make sure you go to Windows, Setting Preferences, and Plugin Manager, and make sure you have searched mesh here and loaded and auto load so you can always get it there when you want to so i'm gonna close the panel uh let's select mesh let's create a mesh network you'll get up this prompt over here and um i'll choose linear okay nothing nothing weird so now you'll see something like this our trees is scattered along a linear line so now you can realize that our previous geometry is hidden. As you can see over here, the grayed out means it's hidden. So we can select our mesh. One of the things to optimize your mesh network so that it doesn't get laggy. I'm telling you this earlier before we start distributing because uh, it might crash your computer if you distribute mesh, a lot of mesh networks at once and yeah it can bring problems so one of the ways how to optimize it is to select mesh in the outliner go to mesh and utilities and switch mesh geometry types and this will switch them for an instance an instance meaning it will only reference the first um, geometry that's there so it's, it's it's like referencing from the first geometry that's there instead of copying the same geometry and adding more poly all you count to your scene. So now you can select your mesh network. After doing that, come to mesh distribute. Uh, make sure you set uh, your linear here from linear to mesh because you want it to scatter on a mesh. Then uh, 
at your inputs, at your input mesh, you can middle mouse the plane, the ground, and make sure you have deleted the history of the plane, because I forgot to do that. It can bring issues. And also zero out the transformation for the plane, for the main ground. So let's go back to our mesh networks. So over here at the mesh input, you can middle mouse your ground to the input mesh. And when we get out of here, you can see that our trees are distributed nicely along the ground. So this could be a great time to save your project, I forgot to mention. So make sure you have set your project to a folder. So for example, I'll keep mine in a folder called Mash Network. Make sure to set your project, then go back to the file and project windows and make sure also this is set to the same file set. You can also come here and save scene and if you haven't saved before it will pop up like a save us. So make sure you have selected that folder and the scenes, give it a name, hold mine mash tutorial and save. Yes, I'll replace it. Okay, so and now we got our trees on the ground. This is really nice. And this is basically the whole solution to your issues. Now for the bonus, uh, here you can see that my ground is a mountain and um, I want to distribute my trees on the ground only and not on the mountains. So let me show you how to do that. Make sure you have set the number of points. I'll put mine to around 500. I think I can add some more. I'm going to go with 2000. So mind you, if you are using a mesh, if you're using your geometry and not an instance, this will definitely be taxing to your computer because every single tree here would be a mesh. Uh, a mesh as in it has its own polygons and everything so the poly count would skyrocket and yeah that can cause us reduce. Although if you want to export this something like this to another application like FBX export uh, I don't think instances work so you'll have change everything here into geometry. Uh, the way you do that is you select the mesh, go to mesh, till it is, and you select big instance to object. Uh, I won't select it now because this definitely can show what you see. Okay, so now you have your trees on the ground scattered very well and you want to distribute them very well. So one of the things that you can do is since all the trees look upright, you can add in a node, like a randomizer node. So make sure you select your mesh network, go here to mesh, select here random, select it and add node. And now you can see everything is weird, things are floating up and down. No! So make sure you zero out the X axis, zero out the Y axis and a zero out zero out also the z axis under rotation so under rotation not the zero out all the positions and under rotation that's when you can make some few changes so like some trees may be slightly bended like that slightly like that maybe slightly like that then you can change the seed type yeah whatever whatever you like i think i like this one because i like how this trees looks natural wow. so that's a random node, you can use that just to make things feel a bit different and not linear across everything. Now for the next part, we want our trees not to hug over the mountains. We want the mountains to be completely free and our trees to, uh, to be all the way down. So one of the ways you can do that is you can select the mesh network, come here under visibility under visibility node but here you can see a strength map so we are, we are going to create our own strength map for this so under strength map you have a texture box 
which you can apply to the textures but first you need your own texture so the way that i usually do this let us say if your ground already had its own material you can replace it with a new one you can replace it with a new material i'm gonna give it a numbered material then you can right click go to paint then you go to 3d paint so 3d paint comes up with this toolbox it's like the sculpting toolbox but or if you have done rigging uh this kind of like the weight painting box make sure you first of all assign textures and this pop-up box will appear i'll keep mine uh a 1k texture because i don't want it to paint to take a lot of space in my computer so i'm gonna give it a 1k texture you can choose my uh, teeth uh, I believe in you can work even PNG uh, up to you. The idea is just to get an image. What you are doing here is you are creating black and white map just to show the mesh network where we want trees and where we don't. So it here assign textures. So now you can see you can be able to paint here under flood. Make sure it's in color white. Then you can flood the paint with white. Then now anywhere that we paint, you can move this slider down here so you can change from uh or you can change the color from here. So flood is like when you want to paint every at once, so you can flood the paint with white. So this will show that everywhere that's white, we want trees. Then now over here under the top color here you can change it to black and this now we paint this place over here we don't want trees to be there so oh, and i've gone too far so we can select over here you can also go to top down view if it helps and you can draw around there this is a soft brush if you want it to be much effective use a hard brush like this one this is a hard brush so everything is just black there's no there's no fading for the trees to come in but you can also add a fading by using a soft brush so now as you can see i've painted most of the this is black. I'm going to use a soft brush on the edges so that uh, they can fade in nicely. The trees can maybe fade in very well towards the mountains. You can also in increase the lightness of the color. This helps in the fading. I wasn't able to show it during the recording. Anyways, back to the video. So after you have done painting your area and now you want to make the trees don't come close to that, you can come here back to your tool settings, come here to save texture and your textures will be saved in your, in your folder. It's usually saved in your folder under, under images and the source images i'm gonna show you as i'm gonna apply it so now select the mesh network go to um the distribute or the visibility and here under under strength map i uh, give it a file texture select um and i hear you should come under your the folder that you created under source images come to 3d painted textures come to mesh tutorial uh okay for mine it's under mesh tutorial but under 3d painted textures you'll find a folder mine is called mesh tutorial and you can select the t file that you created and then you can see that the trees have completely not distributed on the areas that has black around it so now you can change back your textures from 
the material that we created earlier to uh, the material that had before that. So for example, I believe I created this here. Now that you can switch back to, okay, make sure you have selected the object that you want to switch the material, then you can switch back to the previous color. So now you can see that our trees are distributed well and they are on the areas that are, they are not on the areas that are marked with black. Anyways, um, that's it for the video. That's the right of using machine network in Maya. So, I hope you guys have understood something and may it assist you in your endeavors. Whatever, whenever you're doing something and you think doing it this way might actually help you in terms of saving time, that's how you do it. So, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have an awesome day. What are you doing? Hmm? What are you doing? <laughs> Just hanging around. <laughs>